Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is something I came upon the other day, and I thought I would share it with you. Now, as you can see here on your screen, obviously, this is my iPad. Now, on the iPad, you know, we take a lot of pictures with our digital phones, right? And this happens to be with my iPhone. So with my iPhone, I take a ton of pictures. They always say the best camera you have is the one that you have in your pocket. Well, most of the time, it seems like my iPhone is the camera I have in my pocket. And I know a lot of you take pictures with your iPads also. So I thought, wouldn't it be great, instead of coming home and transferring those pictures or photos uh, to your computer and editing with the computer program, can we do any edits on our pictures and make them look better just by simply using the iPad? That's why I came upon this nice app that is free, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. Because we all are using Photoshop Elements or Photoshop or something to that effect. So we are going to talk today about Photoshop Express. It's down here in the lower right-hand corner of the iPad. I'll go ahead and launch that. And again, this is Photoshop Express. It is running on the iPad. And uh, yeah, don't look at the dear pictures on the top there. Those are just something I snapped of someone's car, not mine. Um, what I am going to show you here is some a little bit of work with a picture that we took downtown. So uh, we were downtown recently. Uh, we live here close to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this is my wife and I. So I figured we would just use this photo. Now, what you can do with this application is really cool. It has a lot of uh, wizards. And a lot of you know I teach Photoshop Elements, and I love you know using wizards because it makes our job so much easier to clean up our photograph or do different things with it. So the first thing we're going to look at, if you click on My Looks, over down here on the bottom, we click on that, and it's going to give you uh, My Looks, which is basically nothing in there, I guess. Let's close that. Let's go to Basic. So with Basic, it gives you all these different types of edits you can do with the photograph. Just by simply touching on it, it will improve the photograph. Let me move my mouse out of the way here. Uh, get that way out of the way here, maybe. There we go. So if we did something like Vibrant, you'll see where it actually changes those buildings in the back. So here, I'll just undo that by touching the little undo button on the top. There, we undo it. And we'll go to, um, how about something like a winter look, since this is a wintertime photograph. And there you go. So it cools it down. It gives it a nice little look of winter, right? So there's a lot you can do in here. There's a lot to play with. Um, let's do something like uh, maybe you want a haze. So now we have a haze on those photos. But you can see just a single touch on the iPad, and we dramatically change this photo. Now, one thing I could tell you is we are using the iCloud for storage. Uh, which makes it nice. Uh, my wife and I both, and I would suggest if you have an iPhone or an iProduct or an, or an Apple product, to go ahead and pay the $0.99 cents a month for the extra storage. I hate when I go to use my phone and it says storage is full, storage is full, storage is full. It makes it really nice when it's able to actually, uh, you know, use it, take a photo, and I know it's going to iCloud. And when you come in here, all these pictures are just coming up. I didn't have to transfer anything to my iPad. They were all just there because they're on my iCloud. And uh, it's just a nice place to keep your photographs. Um, at least the photos anyway from your from your iPhone. Here's a dreamy look. Here's a dreamy look. To me, it kind of blows out the background a little bit. But you have to play around with those. They're pretty cool to play with. So we close basic up. We'll go to black and white. And now we can see all the different black and whites we can do. Here's a pinhole. So you can see a pinhole. What that kind of does to me, it looks like um, kind of put a vignette around it a little bit. Give it that little bit of a vignette look. Uh, we'll do a antique. That's a really nice cool look, kind of like an antique picture there. Really cool looking. And I uh, just want to give you basic ideas with that. Here's portrait. So with portrait, it's going to, you know, basically touch up your portrait, your touch up your faces, right? Um, do something like a soft look. You can see where it softened the color of the faces. And you can add more here. If you want to add more of the look, just move you, this little slider to the right. 
If you would like to take some out, let's take some color out of the faces. Go back to the left, and you'll remove some of that, which you were just applying. Let's scroll over here and take a look. Um, we tried the soft look. Try the gleam look. There you go. Again, we can move this back and forth. We can give it some more look here. We can take some more out of it. So I just wanted to show you that the iPad can be a part of your workflow uh, if you are taking photographs with your, uh, with your Apple device. Nature is obviously for nature pictures. Uh, we'll see here the blues. We can see where it would... That would be really nice if you took a picture of something like a, a maybe an ocean with a nice blue sky. You can add more blue color to it. Uh, classic look. Gives that nice classy look, but it put a lot of noise in there. I would think you'd have to remove some of this to get rid of some of that noise out of their faces. Out of our faces, I should say. But those are for nature. You also have something called pop color. Where we can do some magenta. We can use some pop color in these photographs. You actually see some of the purple coming out of my hat there. All right, let's take that out. That's pop color. Duo tone. So you could do two tone. Something like that. Again, we can slide this back a little bit. Now, granted, it's not going to do everything. I was hoping when I came in here it would do something like, um, you know, remove spots from, from a photograph or something like the clone stamp tool or something to that effect. But, but you know what? It does enough where it's going to make it, um, close that up, where it's going to make it very useful to you that you can go in here and do things with your pictures. Um, let's see, those are that. We can go to crop. So you can do some basic cropping with your picture. Uh, it says, once you have cropped the photo to your liking, save your crop simply by navigating to the next step. You can do some rotating. If your picture is not aligned, you can rotate it. Uh, you can see here, rotate right on the bottom, rotate left. Flip horizontal or flip vertical, or you can even straighten it. So you get some of those photographs are just, the camera's just a little tilted. If you don't believe in using the uh, the grid I always have the grid turned on on my A6000, so when I look through the viewfinder, that I can at least line the grid up with the horizon. And you can do a transform. So we can do an auto balance, or balance auto, full auto, vertical skew, or a horizontal skew. All right, so we will go aspect ratio. Now, if you look at aspect ratio, you can do um, something like a square photo. So it's just doing the cropping for you. Um, how about a Facebook page cover? How about that? That makes a cover page for your Facebook. Uh, you can move the picture up and down simply. I'm just touching on the screen. Once you have that where you want it, that would be like a Facebook banner. Uh, if you've ever done a banner for your Facebook. Um, let's see here what else we have. Just a ton of stuff in there. How about a Twitter post? So here's a Twitter post. Again, you can move the photo up and get it within your crop. Uh, and then you would simply crop out the picture. Get rid of that. Okay. So that's the aspect ratio, the rotate and transform we looked at. Now let's look at, let's say we're not going to do that. Here's an auto color balance. You can just simply click on the auto. And it's going to do an auto color balance. Or we can play with the temperature. Temperature, tint. Vibrance, saturation. Uh, I w talked with, with uh, one photographer at one time, and he liked to desaturate his pictures a little bit. That's what he liked to do, take a little bit of color out of the pictures. You can see here we can remove some of the color. Let's go down and leave them more. So that way you're getting more of those blacks out, uh, and you're bringing the color in. You can see more color in the block. Or we can just oversaturate, right? We can go up to more saturation. Watch your skin tones when you're playing with this. Let's get out of that. Uh, there is just a ton of effects. You can do sharpening. Um, this view provides a greater precision while adjusting sharpening. Click OK. Because we're looking at edges, so usually I look at hairlines to see how soft they're getting uh, when you're sharpening. 
because sometimes if you're over sharpen, you will start to uh, lose some of the detail. Red eye removal, if you still get red eye, I know some of you do, but you know, with red eye detection on the camera, it's very, very good. But look at this, you can also remove red eye from pet's eyes. So if you take pictures of your pets, we can add text. I did play with this a little bit the other day. Um, let's see what kind of text we want to add. So if you double tap the text, it will come up. You could do something like this. Hit done. We can move it around. So we can put that wherever we like to put that. Something like that. So we can do text with it. This here, if you sign into it, you get free advanced feature, features. You get free advanced features. And I thought I would leave that until another time. I'm going to play with those more and get a little bit more comfortable with that before I want to show you anything about that. There is a blemish removal. And you can blow this up just by stretching this. And I moved a little bit of hair right here. So if we tap, we could just move that hair or shadow or whatever that might be there. And I'm working right down on the bottom of Mary's chin. You can see the little uh, ball coming up here. So there is a little bit of blemish removals that you can do on the photograph. And then at the end here, you can cut it out in Photo Mix. Uh, you can liquefy it in Photo Fix. You can heal it in Photo Fix. And you can add stickers from Avery Photo Editor. But what's nice about this, once it's done and everything is finished on this photograph, it will actually keep it in your, in your cloud storage. So there's no save button on here that I found. Uh, let's see what this button does up here. Kind of gives us layouts, so we can do different layouts. And uh, we can make some nice photograph layouts there of those pictures. Let's go back. Uh, open it back up here. Um, this one, I think, is Auto Enhance. So the little wand at the very top, if you can see when I click on that, that's an Auto Enhancer, so it's going to enhance the photograph. We're going to reset it. And then at the very top, there is a place where we can click on it and export this out. Uh, once again, you can put it back in the camera roll. is where it's going to be anyway. Uh, you can Facebook it if you have that feature uh, logged into. Instagram it. Send it to Twitter. Send it to Flickr. Uh, send it into Lightroom CC if you have that on your iPad. Put it in your Creative Cloud if you have an account. Creative Cloud Library, again, if you have an account. Uh, open with What's Up. Email. Message. Um, messenger line and more what's under more and more is pretty much whatever's on your iPad uh, like in here oops I don't want to do that cancel that click on more again in here I'm just scrolling I can put in my Evernote uh, copy it to Adobe Acrobat copy it to uh, maybe your Google Drive there your Dropbox uh, put it in, like I said Evernote uh, maybe your cloud, you can copy it to Outlook if you have Outlook on your iPad. You can even send it to your printer and print it if you have a printer in your house uh, that's able to print uh, from your iPad. So it is a worthwhile application to check out, um, especially, like I said, if you do take pictures with your iPhone. It's a very nice program. I don't know if they make uh, something... Uh, like this for Android tablets. I would imagine they probably do. Uh, you'd have to check on that though. I'm not really sure because I don't really use Android. So. so hopefully you enjoyed this video tutorial on how to edit photos with an iPad. Uh, I just think it's a nice way when you're out and you know you don't want to carry your computer and everything. Maybe you want to clean up a couple pictures you take with your iPhone and post them to Facebook or Instagram right away. And I know you could do it on your iPhone because you can even put this app on your iPhone. But it's a smaller screen. It's nice to be able to see the picture on the iPad and be able to manipulate it. Folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Jack's Tech Corner. Please give it a thumbs up. Uh, give me a like there. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And uh, hopefully I will be bringing you more exciting, different type of new um, photo editing and photography type videos. So I'll talk to you next time. Take care. 
and we'll see you later. Bye for now.